uh, wow, everybody showed up here. You're no pressure. You're rounding out the con. Oh my lord! You're closing it out. Uh, before we jump to the audience questions, I actually, it's my prerogative, I get to open with a question. I have a, uh, a Lauren question, okay? Because you... Alright. Uh, <laughs> you just brought her out again for comic relief just yeah. like a couple yeah. weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah, we did. What, uh, which was an awesome skit. What is the, what's the secret to bringing her out, like, just periodically? Like, when do you know, like, okay, it's about time to do about another time to Lauren or Nan? Well, the, the thing that struck me is when I started doing the show, my, my sketch show, um, uh, you know, I did a very old lady and a very young kid. And uh, I need prosthetic for the old lady and for the young kid. They didn't give me anything. If my career goes according to plan, I'm not going to need any prosthetic for the old lady, but I will need prosthetic to play the teenager. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. So you just kind of, to be honest, I did it. That I chose that character to do for comic relief because it didn't need any prosthetic. So I'm actually quite lazy. Don't like too much prep time. <laughs> well, it was great. But it was good fun. It, yeah. And also what's good is, about it is you come on with a load of kids and people don't realise it's going to be a skit until you come out and start being rude to someone. And the, in fact, the first time I did that character, that teenage uh, sort of, a, uh, you know, insolent character, um, we did it as a, as a set-up to a, a, a group called um, McFly and a lot of people wrote in to the BBC to complain about why they'd let such a rude teenager go on TV. <laughs> You're like, yeah. We're just like, you know, how could you let this happen? Why is no one stopping it? You know, just sitting there like, I'm above him. <laughs> yes. Well, it's just been about uh, 10 years and a couple months since the introduction of Donna Noble on Doctor Who. And, uh, and I think we could give a round of applause for that. Quiet. Oh, I mean, I, but yet, I look back at those episodes, and she's such a human companion, and yes, there's been a lot of human companions, but <laughs> someone that's like moving through life, uh, not always remarkably, and oh. yet capable of remarkable feats. Yeah, and I think that was the great beauty of Donna, that she was, uh, and she, also she knew she was nothing special, and that was alright, really, but she, I always felt she had this... Uh, she, she kind of had the feeling that she was capable of greater things and I think it was so beautifully written the way uh, between the the runaway bride and then the first episode how how Russell brought that together because when I did the runaway bride nobody knew I was going to come back as a uh, as a full-time companion it was just a one-off gig and, and, and that was it but then it all kind of paid off so beautifully and I think that's the most amazing thing about Russell's mind but yeah she was an ordinary girl plucked out of, you know, an ordinary life and, uh, and, and, and achieved extraordinary things. Of course, the tragedy is she doesn't remember any of it, which was, uh, yeah. which was a heartbreak, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think it's, a lot of us are still upset about it. Yeah, that. it was. It's absolutely devastating, you know, and, but so brilliantly written again that the last thing we see of Donna, well, certainly in the, in the series, not in the, not in the specials when she came back, was she was just right back to as she was. There'd been no growth, and that was the heartbreak of her, that she'd seen so much and done so much, but actually actually achieved nothing in her own memory. So, but. but you did bring her back for some big Finnish audio dramas. I did, we did. We did that. Yeah. yeah. Was it easy slipping back into that skin? It was, it was. And because Jake, David and I did it together, um, it was a joy and it was just, it was lovely. It was like old times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's throw it to an audience question. We have the microphone over here. I would ask you to keep it to one question per person. If, uh, and if there's not already line, hop up there, guys, and get your... All right, cool. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, so my question, uh, obviously your doctor that you played with was the perfect doctor for you character-wise. Uh, but we always joke and talk about how it would have been interesting to see you with Eccleston and how funny it would have been that nothing would have gotten done. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been snarky back and forth. Did you ever think about that? Well, here's the thing, and I'm going to make a full disclosure now, and some people may know this already. Um, I didn't 
know, oh, I mean, they knew about Doctor Who before I joined it, but I'd never seen it. And um, I've never seen the Christopher Eccleston stuff. <laughs> Now, I, so what I'd say to your question is, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry, because I can't make it up, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm really sorry, can I sing a song or something to <laughs> yes, So don't ask me any sci-fi questions, because, I mean, I used to be the bane of David's life, because we'd be doing an episode, and I'd be like, what are the ones this week? Who's chasing us? And he'd be like, he'd be like the ooze. And I'm like, right, what are those? The, the ones who look like potatoes or spaghetti vomiting? <laughs> That's about my level. <laughs> and the, the Sultarans, I thought, were called, um, what did I think they were called? Sultanas. I thought they were called for ages. <laughs> oh, no, it's not Sultaras. What is it? Sontaran. See, I don't even know. And that's Sorry. when the crowd turned against you. That's when, and she was never seen again. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. Thank you, yeah. Would you have liked your character to have played a bigger part in the episode Midnight? And how do you think you or your character would react in that situation? Well, first of all, you have to remind me what Midnight was about, eh? <laughs> It was about uh, Okay, I can, actually I do know that one. Was, was that on a plane? Yeah. No? Yeah. Yes. And I was I was just at the top and the tail of the of the at the spa. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well here's the thing about midnight, because there was also an episode called Turn Left, right? And and in order to make both midnight and turn left, what we had to do was uh, what they call double bank which isn't rhyming slang or anything like that. Um, it's, a t it's a TV term, it's what they do is, in the same uh, one week period where you're supposed to film one episode, we filmed two. And how we did that was that, if you notice, David was only at the top of the tail of Turn Left. Mi I was only at the top of the tail of Midnight, and it was in order to, to film both episodes at the same time. So it wasn't that we, uh, you know, that they're, they, they didn't want us in the episodes, but we just technically couldn't do it, so that, that was why. But actually, they were all in like some tiny little like set. I mean, the midnight set was really claustrophobic, and I was running around with Billy, so I was much better off. <laughs> thank you. Hello. But thank you. Hi. Hi there. I know you. You're my little ginger son, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. You, we, we had a photo op, didn't we? And you, we signed, yeah. <laughs> What's your question? What's your question, darling? How did you react when you knew what Star Wars was about? Right. How, the question is, is the question, how did I react when I knew what Star Wars was about? No, I mean, Doctor Who. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, the valid saying, question, it's but... It's a valid question. I have to also say, I've never seen Star Wars. <laughs> We're going to need security to get you out of here. <laughs> Look, listen, the world isn't just full of people who watch Star Wars. Yeah. But it'd be great if it was. It'd be great if it was. Yeah. Oh, I, I know I'm probably the only person in the world who's not seen it, but it's about space or something, isn't it? <laughs> so about Doctor Who. Anyway, about Doctor Who. What, what was my reaction when I heard what Doctor Who was about? I'm still waiting, darling. I still, I mean, I didn't realize, I mean, look, you're all gonna now hate me and turn on me, but I actually thought, until David corrected me for about the hundredth time, I thought his name, and surely this must be a, a, a usual mistake, I thought his name was Doctor Who. Like Mr. Who. Yeah, but more medical school. Yeah, exactly. Didn't a lot of people do that? Don't you think it? No, people were looking at me like, no. No, you evil cretin, no. And I kept saying, um, I can't remember how it came about, but it was like, I was thinking, the, the doctor, and I'm saying, why don't you say, I'm Doctor Who, I'm Doctor Who. He's because it's not my name, that's not my name. I'm the doctor. So, that doesn't answer a question either, does it? It's going terribly. 
very well. <laughs> it, was, it was a good question. A good I'm, question. I'm just not qualified to ask it. I suppose I, what I thought Doctor Who was about, because when I was young I never watched it. Cause I, <laughs> David and I are total opposites because David's a total, utter, geek, nut, Doctor Who, knows everything. I mean, I seriously don't know anything. I thought the only person that was the Doctor's enemy was the Daleks. I didn't know there was different aliens every week that came running in. <laughs> um, so he would be my, he could shoot to me um, along, but I, yeah, I didn't really... Sorry, would you mind not doing that? Oh. Sorry, would you mind? You don't know shit about Doctor Who! I've never listened to someone black their way through so much sci-fi stuff. Oh my god. St you already know Star Wars! Oh, I've never seen it! Oh my god. And now there's so many of them, how do you even get out? <laughs> you know, you're doing prequels now. Really Star Wars. funny, when we did the first, uh, uh, say it, please, the first Dal episode with um, uh, Billy with Daleks, she actually came to my trailer and she said, But she actually didn't call it a Dalek, she went, a Dalek. <laughs> and I went, it's not public school, darling. Oh my god! <laughs> anyway, so... Oh, even I knew what a Dalek was. Oh my god, I'm like a geek. Um, I'm gonna give this back to like you. Uh, I just have a quick question for what you. Is it, can you show everyone your bum? <laughs> going on, John's been in Doctor Who before my character came along. I walk into the makeup trailer, John's lovely to me, absolutely so welcome. I mean everyone on Doctor Who is so, so welcoming. John's absolutely lovely to me, brilliant, absolutely lovely. And he said, well we, listen, we should swap numbers, we should swap numbers, so I give him my number. <laughs> you know, because not, not like, listen, I didn't know, I know I didn't have a chance, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so we swap numbers and John goes out and Babs, you remember Babs, the makeup artist, she went, She's a lovely Welsh, <laughs> Welsh lady. She went, Oh, Kath, then you know he's only going to send you pictures of his bottom. And then, and he did. And then, and then we get on set, and my first, you know, my first, uh, my first uh, scene with John, it was, it was the penultimate one, wasn't it? Correct, so we, we were all in the TARDIS. I'm gonna say something like Go on. the world's end or something. Close. <laughs> Journey's end. Yeah. Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least you know the Planet of the Apes are. <laughs> no, and it, you know, it's all, all the characters are in, you know, real, uh, you know, stress mode. It's all terribly tense. It's terribly tense. So it gets to obviously a very tense bit with me and John. No, me and David rather. And you know, just above my eye line. John's doing this with his bare butt. <laughs> and David completely ignoring it because he's so used to it. No, used to it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Sorry, can you, can you stop doing that? And it was like, we tried. <laughs> we tried, but no. Uh, listen, I'm going to leave you and I'll leave you to it. No. But isn't it awesome that Catherine's now with us as a part of the family of Han? So. I'll see you on the plane, darling. You will. We both had beans. It's going to be a great flight.
down at Comic Con until you see a bear of it, Bob. Oh. Yeah. Uh, look, so, uh, whoever had the next question, you no pressure. Back yeah. <laughs> you, you gotta follow John Barrowman. <laughs> What's your question? Clark and I'm 10 years old and I was wondering I was wondering if you I'm going to say thank you for Lauren, Lauren Cooper because she stopped a bullying issue for me. Oh, oh. Um I was wondering if you had any advice for kids who get bullied in school. Hmm. Well, you know, it's a tricky one for kids who get bullied because I always think, you know, as a parent, you always worry that your kids are going to be bullied. I actually think it's probably worse if you find out your child is a bully, you know, because it's, that's, that's, a, that's kind of like a more, it's almost like a more worrying thing because with the bullies, the problem is theirs. And with the bullied, the problem is not yours, you know, and so... It's a very, it's a very tricky thing. I was bullied at school as well, and it's a terrible thing. You know, it's it's a really awful thing. For me, the way I got through it, and I think is why I became a a, a comedian, is I I made them laugh. That's what I had to do. I had to make the bullies laugh. And uh, now that's not always a that's not always going to work, obviously. But um, Ultimately, you have to believe in yourself and stand up for yourself and know that whatever bullies are saying to you, it ain't true, and it's not right, and it's their problem, you know, so. Hello. Hello. It's okay, I'm not a Star Wars fan either. Oh, great. Right. <laughs> hey, with me, me and you, people are hissing. Don't be bullies, we just talked about that. Your problem, not ours. <laughs> We're alright. My question is, what are the, some of the dynamics or differences between working on an American show and cast, like The Office versus Doctor Who and your variety show, which is fantastic? Oh, thank you. Um, well, the, the difference in, um, like, for example, with my show and The Office is I didn't get to make any of the shows. <laughs> I wasn't the top dog on that one. <laughs> um, well, the process is very, is, it's kind of like the process is a little different in America because um, I'm going to have to say it, it's, although we do very well at home, we do exceptionally well, but in America it's a massive and slicker operation. You know, it just is. It's, you, you, you were kind of, you know, born to... To, 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 to be in the entertainment business, it seems, you know, it's so geared up for it. So it's like, it's like being in a, a very well-oiled machine, working on a, on a, a TV show in America. It's, it's, it's kind of incredible, and it's faster, and it's, um, it's kind of more intense, it's, it's kind of slightly more exciting, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. At home, though, because the shows I've been involved in at home, I, uh, sorry, with the exception of Doctor Who, which I didn't write, but my own shows and other shows that I write, you are um, part of the creative process, so you, you have a different take on it. With, with The Office, I was, you know, I came in as an actor and I was delighted to be part of this already amazing show. Um, but it's, a, it's just a slightly different thing. It's, it's just a bit, it's just bigger here, you know what I mean? It's just, y'all are bigger, you know what I mean? <laughs> Especially in Texas. Especially so. in Texas. Um, it, yeah, it's kind of, um, you know, that is not in, in any way to, to downcry anything that, that the British industry does. But we're smaller. You know, we are a smaller country. We have a smaller, I guess, budget on things. And, 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 and I, I do think uh, America kind of leads the way a lot of the time. Yeah, it's great. Well, let me expand that dynamic question because... You and David Tennant also uh, worked together on Much Ado About Nothing yeah, yeah. Like in 2011. Yeah. So, you know, there's the Doctor Who characters, the Doctor Donna, and then now we're working with Shakespeare. How does that, that different, uh, I guess, production kind of alter the dynamic between you two? 
The dynamic, honestly, I don't think the dynamic between David and I um, shifts because we, we, we kind of use it in a different way, though. Because um, David and I, um, th there was just, we didn't know each other before Doctor Who, um, but it felt like we did. And as soon as we kind of got on set together, it, it, it just sort of clicked. Yeah. And it, and it c continued to do so, and it was, it was amazing. Um, and the the way uh, we, we we took that to, to Beatrice and Benedict in Much Do About Nothing, where the dynamic of the characters was completely different because this was a potential romantic relationship, but they were still sparring. And I think as long as David and I are our characters are sparring in whatever dynamic that is, I think it, it works really well. Right. Um, because we feed off each other as, as actors, I think, you know, and he says there's an incredible lightness of touch that is, is absolutely brilliant to work with. Mm -hmm. And the director of Much Ado About Nothing said one of my favourite things to us when we were in rehearsal. She said that she never walked into the rehearsal room at any time without seeing the two of us laughing together. And that was such a great thing for someone to notice because we just have a laugh, you know. We just have a laugh. It's just, it's just, it's working with your mates. It's working with your friends and it's a joy to work with David in any capacity. It was a joy to watch as well, actually, oh, so. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I did that, sorry. Now I'm, I'm actually bothered. Yeah. I um, love that. <laughs> Um, my other question is, um, yes, I related to your theatre work more expansively. What do you look for when you do kind of theatre roles? Because I was noticing a few of the ones that you've done. I got a chance to see the Much Ado about nothing telecast on, mm -hmm. on yeah, yeah. the movie screen. Not, not that, not that lucky. Um, but what do you look for when you do those roles? Because a few of them are like a bit more dramatic. I'm thinking of assassins, really. Yeah, yeah. It's honestly, it's variety. I think is what I look for. I like to do different kind of things in different genres. Assassins is a musical. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's also it's about who you're working with. So with the, what the thing about Assassins was, I was it was a Stephen so it's a Stephen Sondheim musical, which is incredible material to work with. The director was Jamie Lloyd, who's a fantastic director in Britain, theatre director, and it was the venue there, which is uh, which was the Chocolate Factory, the menu, which actually doesn't make chocolate. I was very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an old chocolate factory that's now become a theatre. Um, and it was, it's the challenge of it, you know, at the time I'd never done a musical, uh, it's just keeping stuff so you don't just rest on your laurels and, 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 and trot out something that people have seen before, I think that's, that's it, you know. Like a constant challenge. Like, yeah, I think yeah. so, and just doing different things and, you know, things that you go into um, not knowing if they're going to be any good, you know, you don't know. You don't, and, and I think that's a challenge in itself, I think that's quite exciting, you go, well, I don't know. I, I'm not in total control of whether this production is going to be any good. I'm only in control of my own performance, which I'm going to give the best I can. And sometimes you're in stuff that just doesn't work, you know. And in theatre, it's much more likely because, um, it, it, you know, it's it's a it's a much more um, immediate thing with theatre. I mean, London's not as not as uh, cutthroat as Broadway, where I think things get closed overnight or anything like that. But still, I think much more with theatre than TV or film necessarily. The critics are king, you know, because people read the read the notices. But you just got to go and do what you think is going to be fun quite a lot of the time, you know, and a challenge, you know. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another <coughs> question over there. Howdy. Yeah. Um, Oh gosh, for just a second. Catherine, you are brilliant. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, seeing as how you, especially since, as you said, you're a bit of a fish out of water in Doctor Who as far as the genre and stuff. Yes. Even though you'd been on the show for a while at the point where you did left turn, how did you feel about <coughs> being a companion who was actually going to carry an entire episode, pretty much? just yourself oh well I um, you know I have a huge ego so I was delighted <laughs> you know I'm like looking through all the other episodes going this David fella's getting a lot of lines <laughs> um, this Mr. Who seems to be muscling in on my time um, I was delighted you know I, I was absolutely delighted Russell's writing Russell T Davis's writing is 
you know, at, at, the, at the top. You know, he's at the top of his game, at the top of his genre, and it's, it's, it was a delight. I don't think I, it ever actually really occurred to me that that was what was happening in the, in the episode. It was just another thing we were doing. Um, but it was, you know, it was, a, it was an honour to do it. And I, I have to say this. Look, I, I, I'm not a sci... You know, I, as you know, clearly I'm not a, a sci-fi aficionado. But it became very clear very early on um, that, that Doctor Who has the most incredible fan base. And you feel a there is a responsibility to not necessarily... You know, listen, I don't know all the aliens' names, okay? <laughs> but... I loved every minute of being in it, and that show was a pivotal, pivotal for me, because without that show, I wouldn't know David, and, and David is, you know, D D David is a fixture in my life, which is an amazing thing, you know, and so I'm very, very grateful to be part of the Hooniverse. <laughs> Now, all I knew was that it was Russell T. Davis and David Tennant. For me, that was, that was it. You know, I was going to do it. And when I was playing Donnie, you don't know when you're playing a character if it's going to be received well, what it's going to be like. You just don't know. But that she went out there and everyone, it seemed, really took to her and t took her to their heart is, is an incredibly humbling and... You know, it's a very, it's a great honour to, to be here, even though I've, I have no idea what you're doing. Um, but, I, but I sense it, and yes, and this is my first, you know, real convention. And to meet, the, to meet people who, are, who, are, who genuinely love what you do is a very, very humbling experience. And I, and I do thank you all for that. So. episodes in the series and in no small part to the amazing range you showed in it so thank you thank you so much thank you well, since you know obviously you were aware of doctor who uh you know had been around for a long time throughout your childhood and everything but <laughs> Mr. Who, before he went to school oh, Jim. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff who Jeff who MD <laughs> Dr. Large <laughs> but before like what was the moment where you realized like I'm actually, I'm part of this legacy now. What, like, when did that strike you? Because since you weren't really a fan and you were aware of the show, when did you kind of become aware of your importance in this legacy and the fact that you're part of this big, big thing? I, I, don't, I don't know, actually. That's a very interesting question. I think it sort of happens sort of in piecemeal. It, there's not one moment where you go, well, actually, that's not true. It, when I, when I did um, the, the Runaway Bride, we went for a screening of it. And not that I knew anything. I didn't know the character was going to be any, you know, going to be popular. Didn't know they were going to bring me back or anything like that. But when they did, they showed it and they showed it on a massive screen. And they showed it, and then those credits came up. Now, even though I didn't watch it, I was aware of the, you know, the, the, the theme tune. I don't know, is it still the same? <laughs> <laughs> they slightly turned yeah, yeah. it, And it came up with that thing, and then it squiggles the names, and it went David Tennant, and then it did squiggle my name, and it put my name at the top, and it was just suddenly, it was suddenly like, oh, well, I need Doctor Who. <laughs> And, and, and it, it, it kind of clicked with me when I kind of saw it on the, you know, on the, on the thing. Um, I really remember seeing that for the first time and, and that. But I, it, you, you don't know. It's not like someone taps you on the shoulder and goes, oh, you're part of this now. It, it sort of gradually dawns on you um, and, and, and keeps dawning on you. Just, I mean, even being here and, and, and meeting people today, I mean... Generally, you, they say, well, you know, all you go and do a, a panel Q&A, and, 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 and I'm kind of thinking, well, I don't have anything to go. <laughs> you know, because you don't know, you don't know. That's, you don't know. And, and it, so it's, it's incredibly, um, it's amazing when people turn up, because you realise what a, you know, what a, what a great thing it is. You know, what a great thing that show is. 
it just reaches out, and, and, and that is a very powerful thing to do. Yeah, most yeah. certainly. Yeah. For sure. Well said, yeah. Oh, hello there. Hi. Hello, darling. Hi, my name is Autumn, and I'm wondering, what's your favorite part of acting in Doctor Who? That is a good question, That's a very Autumn. good question. My favourite part, of, I tell you, I, I'm going to start with telling you what my, what my least favourite part was. All the running. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> running. I used to have to do this thing and I was like, oh no, not more running. And David's like a whippet, he'd be up like that. And he'd have to always, if you watch the episode you'll see it, David has to do this thing where he sort of like runs at half speed just so I can keep up with him. Or he'll do this thing where he'll try and look around, just so I can keep up with him, just so I can like run up with him. But that was my least favourite, and I was always like, I, I only want to wear trainers. And for the, for the runaway bride, which is actually called, that's all she did! She, all she did was run, the runaway bride. <laughs> and there's, there's actually, um, I think, uh, the, 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 I used to drive the costume people mad, because if I was in anything, um, you know, as in anything other than a, like a wide shot, all I, well, all I'd ask first of all is, can you see my feet? Can you see my feet? Because I'd have to change out my trainers if they could, and it really used to annoy me. But um, my favourite part of it, darling, was, um, I think it was when, it, well, it was always working, it was always when I had scenes with David, because David's such a great actor, and we used to have such fun together, so that whenever we had some, like, really kind of, like, backwards and forwards banter, that would be really, that would be really fun. And, um, and I actually... I, I would have loved to have done more period stuff, like stuff where we really went back into time. Because I think period costume is so great. And the only one we did was um, the Agatha Christie episode. The, uh, the, the wasp and the unicorn, I know! Best form, anyone? That was what it was called, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, some people don't even know. <laughs> Fires of Pompeii! We're just shout, shouting out random episodes now. The Fires of Pompeii was a, Oh yeah! Yes, okay! I'm like, no, that was in the future. Um, it was largely togas and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, that might as well be in the future. Yeah. Um, no, of course, the Fires of Pompeii! Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was a great one. I love that. We actually went to Rome to film that. Oh, really? We went to Rome to film it. And uh, the day we left, the studio burnt down. <laughs> and it definitely wasn't my cigarette. <laughs> no, it definitely wasn't, I don't smoke. But um, yeah, they were like, oh great, the BBC's in town. The, the studio's just burnt down. So we weren't invited back, I don't think. <laughs> Did that answer your question? Yeah? Yeah. Cool, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, darling. All right, we are uh, running down on time. I think we have time for maybe two more questions. Hi there. Hi. Hi. So you've never seen Star Wars. <laughs> She's just accusing me of never seen Star Wars. Who started that rumor? <laughs> and you haven't seen most of Doctor Who. Is there anything that you do geek out over? Like a book, a TV show, a movie? That I do what? That you geek out over. Geek out, like that you're oh, a fan of, like a super fan of. Oh, yeah. Um, but what, you mean a sci-fi thing? No, anything. Oh, I was going to say, phew. <laughs> <laughs> no, anything, like a book. What do I really like? Um, uh, oh, do you know what I really love? I mean, it's a real, I, I absolutely adore it. You've probably never heard of it. It's called Scandal. <laughs> Shonda Rhimes? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I absolutely adore her film. I, I watched that show and I, it's like I inhale it. I can't believe the stuff they're coming up with. I watch it and I'm like, no, you can't, no, this can't be happening. No, I can't believe the scope they have mm -hmm. for a TV show. It's kind of like they throw out all the rules. I absolutely think it's amazing. I love it. I want, I want a uh, YouTube video of you watching Scandal and then just your reaction. Oh, just like shouting like, at Come on! No! No! That didn't happen! And I have to also say, there's a, there's a gentleman in it who has... Uh, he plays the character of Cyrus Bean, and I believe his name is Jeff Perry. 
And he honestly has done some of the most finest acting I've ever seen on screen in that show. I mean, they're all absolutely brilliant, but I think the character of Cyrus Perry is a fantastic one. And that gentleman is, it's like a masterclass of acting. I think it's stunning work all, all around. Cool. All right. I think... Can I go and watch it? Yeah. Go watch Scandal. Go yeah, watch it's, Scandal. A, it's a big hit actually over here. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, I, don't, I didn't mean you'd never heard of it as in it's not a massive thing. I just think you'll think that's a waste of time. No one, no one goes, you know, into space. <laughs> actually, that's happening next season. It is going to happen. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, forget it. <laughs> I'm not watching this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the Adventures of Dr. Jeff Boo. <laughs> <laughs> and this is going to be our final question. Oh, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. Hello. Thank you so much for coming. You have been so nice. And oh, thank you. You're willing to be silly in our picture and everything. <laughs> so my question for you is, out of all the characters you've played, if you were to invite three over to dinner at your house, who would yeah. you invite? Oh, my lord. Yeah. You mean uh, of me? Yeah, that you've played. Three of me? How would be too much? You can come over to my house. Well, I, I don't know if I'd invite Donna. She might scare me, actually. <laughs> I think she's certainly told me if my cooking wasn't nice. Um, well, to be fair, I'd probably... I'd invite... Um, I'd, I'd do an old lady nan character. I'd, I'd probably like to, uh, to invite her. Uh, with Donna, maybe. That would be an interesting me. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about of her because there's children present and um, uh, I would probably play, uh, oh, probably play, <laughs> I'd probably invite uh, Lauren as well just for <laughs> all generations represented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right then, uh, Dallas, I think we need to give her a big uh, round of applause for joining <laughs> Thank you.